turn it off. Now it's in the sink. Is the air
mute.
just clicked it now. Hanging up the phone and hanging up. The okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, now hopefully, still don't have any sound. I can hear you. Okay, whoa, so let me turn this down now because I can't, hey, that was good. Can you say something like, hi? <laughs> can you hear me? Hi, Samantha, I can hear you quite clearly. Oh, fabulous. Now we have sound. Now I feel comfortable. <laughs> I get a little nervous when, uh, uh, you know, with the technical stuff. I talk to animals. I'm just not a tech person at all. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Vic. Thanks, honey. <laughs> She's the lifesaver. I'll t tell you that much. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we have 15 minutes before the class starts. Thank you for bringing your animals. Yay. <laughs> we'll do, oh my gosh, we'll do the introductions oh first with the animals. Unless oh you want to do them now, Sam, and before we start, or do you want to wait? Um, we can, why don't we wait just a little longer okay. so other people can feel like they're oh. part of it? Okay, okay. You know, because the time, you know, sometimes we just... <laughs> No, <laughs> but I love the little photos and the exactly. animals being present. That's okay. heartfelt. That makes me feel more safe to do these kind of classes and, you know, do the Zoom thing <laughs> and get information out. Well, I'm going to turn my camera off and I'll come back okay. and like. I'm going to uh, cover mine up and then do a little meditation so I don't feel so frazzled because I couldn't hear. And uh, you know what happens to my nervous system when it's mechanical stuff. Okay. <laughs> I visit the bathroom a lot, let's put it that way. <laughs> it doesn't do well with my body. Okay. See you in a little bit, guys. In about 10 minutes. Great. Yeah, in 10 minutes, exactly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just put a little piece of paper and close my eyes and that's it. Where did I have that paper? Okay. That's right. Pardon, guys. <laughs> there. Chloe, are you asleep? See, darling. What's the other? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
I get for drinking water.
Let's be sure. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. <laughs> Oh, I love it, dog. <laughs> Your dog cuddles like my cat. I don't have anybody cuddle me other than my kitty cat. <laughs> Your dog's cuddling you. Sweet soul. Little old and a very sweet soul. Was this? Uh. <laughs> I don't hear anybody. So Samantha, do you want to go ahead and welcome everyone and then we'll do introductions. We'll keep them yep. nice and um, short, you know, brief, just everyone introduce themselves and your animal. Love Samantha, that. You want to go ahead and start us in. Who's the first person? Okay, so if you would have just unmute yourselves and jump in there and tell us your name, where you're from, and your animal, and if your animal has a little problem. Hi, it's um, Sue and Wayne Yoshimura from Maui, Hawaii. Um, this is a picture of Boone. Um, he's here with us, and we can show you later if you want um, what he is going through. Um, I don't know how brief you want us to be. Um, Hi, you two. Hi. It's been a long I time. <laughs> I know. I miss you so much. I know Boone misses you too. Um, I'll get in touch with you after the class. Okay. 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 Um, to make it real short, Boone was an exceptional dog his whole puppyhood. He earned like 20 AKC titles. Um, you can show me the picture. Um, he was, he's a certified therapy dog. Um, he's almost a champion in the ring. Um, he's, he was a phenomenal dog. Um, before, just before three years old, something started changing. He became very aggressive to us, other people, other dogs. Um, and um, it got real hard. Samantha talked with him 
several times and picked up like a chemical in his brain, but we couldn't figure out what it was. But this past summer, um, he had a, what's called a crisis and was hospitalized. They found out that he has hypoadrenal corticism, which is um, Addison's disease. Basically, he cannot produce the cortisol that he needs to deal with any kind of stress, good stress, bad stress, happy, um, physical or mental. Um, so now he is on a lifetime of prednisone, which has been really- We'll talk about all that later, okay? Because the people don't yeah. need to okay. know but about anyway, that. I wanted to show you him now, call him, just so you can see how much he's Hi, changed. Bob. Hi, Boone. Hi, Boone. Oh, my God. You can it's see cute. all the massive body loss in the head and the pigmentation. Um, and he's just yeah. very unhappy. Oh, yeah, we can, we can we'll talk about that. Great. So let's. Hi, Dora. Who else, who else would like? Let's go ahead and do another introduction. Thank you, Sue. I could say this is true. I can't hear you, honey. Claire, can you hear me? I not now. Yeah. You can hear me now? Yes, I can. I, uh, Diane from uh, Redondo Beach, California. This is Hi. Chloe. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> she's, four <laughs> she's 14. Okay. She's a rescue. Somebody bred her and dumped her. And I took her home to find her a home, and I did, mine. And I have two other cats, these two. One's a tortie and one's a tuxedo. I don't know if you can... Yeah, we can see them. See them. Um, they're also rescues. I lost my shadow a couple years ago. He was a schnauzer. That was her buddy and the tortoiseshell's cat buddy a couple of years ago from lymphoma. And now Chloe's got fatty tumors, which yeah, I'm, sort of worried know, me, although the vet isn't terribly worried about them right now. They, they worry me. Yeah, I need to find out what causes those. Yeah, she really loves you. So. She's, yeah, she's a yeah. hugger. She loves to she's hug. She's a hugger. Yeah, I know, she <laughs> wants to wrap around like a scarf. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. So now, yeah. um, who's next? Claire, you have your little buddy there. Go ahead. Yeah, she, she moved behind me now. It's Zoe. Zoe's eight. She has anxiety, separation anxiety issues. Okay. Thanks, Claire. And then who's next? Anybody else? Hello. My name is Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, I have a cat named Lucy. She's a rescue cat. Hi, Lucy. Yeah, she's also got anxiety. Um, I think she was with an older person in the beginning and they passed away and somebody put her out as a stray and just let her, she's very anxious when her food dish gets empty because she thinks she's gonna starve again. So anyway, she's um, still got a lot of wild in her but I've had her for two years. I live in San Diego. Okay. Yeah, there's some things we can do with uh, help with the anxiety. And one of the things, animals are visually oriented. So I want you to see the bowl when it gets empty. I want you to see in your mind, I'm going to feel it. I'll always, and I want you to tell her, I will always feel it for you. I will always feed you. I want you to come from your heart and just do that, okay? And that will help her. I pray for her every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty, who else? Uh, hi. hi. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Ah. Go ahead. And your name? Uh, I'm Normie, and this is Magnus. And hi, Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Normie. Uh, hi, Samantha. Um, Magnus doesn't have any troubles, but we just have an abandoned cat visiting us, so he's in a state right now, and I have to figure out what to do with this kitty. But I'm just interested, Samantha, in your ideas about fleas, and you know we get ticks and fleas, and I will not put. I hate putting that okay. stuff on him. So okay. I'm interested in that. Okay. Thank you. There's some things we can do about that. All right. Now. Hi, I'm Luz, and this is Yochi. 
and you've met her before and she's uh, she's she's very nervous all the time she gets nervous with everything everybody's nervous right now so learning how to be calm in your body and emanate what calm feels like will help her there are other remedies you can you know other than our visuals and our sensory but we're, we're being forced to uh you know find out what it feels like to be safe in our own body we're not and they're not there they pick up our vibes as well as their own and magnifies their stress right now it's pretty stressful out there <laughs> okay who's next my hi. name is shashtin yeah. i'm from uh, sweden sweden hi yes hi hi <laughs> uh, i'm working uh, with helping people uh, with performance horses who have bit related problem behavior okay and uh, uh, it's not uh, yeah caused by the will, it is uh, pain reflexes from the bit in the mouth. And I, mean, I need some, mm -hmm. I need some well, advice about, uh, they need to handle the painful situation over and over again, if they are driven or ridden with a bit in the mouth. Yeah, you might, uh, you might start, writing about it get it in the newspapers because they are going to have to change the design and uh, you know we can help them with a little bit of pain and stuff but that isn't the way to go okay no. not not dealing with the major issue major issue is the structure major issues with the structure so start writing keep a log and then be bold just, you know, I'm 77. I'm more bold now than I ever have been. And I figure, what the hell? You know, I'm going to say what it, I need to say. So, you know, do that. <laughs> yes. Just write, write, write and see if you can get it in newspapers. Get it in magazines. Get it in, mm -hmm. you know, let's make a new design. If it's giving them big problems, then there's something with the design. Okay. They shouldn't. They shouldn't have anything but food in the mouth. That's the big problem. That is. That is. And we need to change yes. because at one time we did ride horses without mm. bit, mm. and we need to recognize a, a whole different way of not control but interrelationships. Mm. Yes. So you know, so we have to you know things can change. I yes. hope that, you know, I focus on they're going to be changing. All righty. Who's next? Keep Hi. up with your great work, though, you know, because it's hard when you're dealing with all that. Yes. Who's next? I'll go next. It's Leslie. Hi, Hi. Leslie. Hi, Samantha. I am invisible today because I'm not presentable to any living human. Uh, <laughs> Honey. <laughs> or animal, I should say, as well. <laughs> <laughs> my kitty's name is diva moon and i just wrote in the chat to you samantha which i just realized i wrote it to everybody but that's fine um the issue that i'm bringing with her and basically i'll just say it quickly um she's a kidney cat she's diagnosed um as um third stage kidney disease but i've worked with multiple kidney cats and done really well with them and she's on some extraordinarily wonderful products and she's doing really great she just had her checkup her 13 month checkup and she's um she hasn't her values haven't diminished they've actually slightly improved just slightly after 13 months which is wonderful the issue is vomiting and the vet mm -hmm. thinks she might have acid issues so she's on pepsid but I noticed that when she, the issues when she vomits, she vomits inten really intensely. It's an intense, intense episode. And it can go from like two to five or six times in a row with like m minutes in between. And she feels really awful afterwards. So I actually give her a half dose of injectable Serenia to control the vomiting, but it can take her a good four, anywhere from four to six, four to five days to come back to where she was prior to the episode. Do you give her any kind of good probiotics? Start bringing more and more good, positive, healthy bugs and some, you know, into her gut. Because that may help, you know. Okay. 
when your gut is really, really off and it keeps going off, keeps up. So she may not be getting uh, some good probiotics and prebiotics. Do some research on that. Okay. okay. All righty. And um, Samantha, if, if when you get around to it today with speaking with everybody, is there, is there, um, I'd love some insight as to why it takes her so, so long to come back to normal and why she, she feels so dreadful afterwards. Yeah, I can feel the discomfort in her gut. I feel like I've vomited a hundred times is what it feels like. Even now? So both, yeah, both sides, uh, both sides. I can feel it on both sides, not just so it's running across the, across the upper part. I don't feel it in the lower groin, groin at all. I feel it in the upper part of her body. So we'll talk later, okay? Okay, that would be great. Thank are, you. <laughs> okay, doke. Is there someone else? My name is Robin, Hi, and Robin. I work with race horses primarily. And Kirsten, like you, I just want to say, like I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> there needs to be some change. But um, I rescued this horse. I call him Gandalf, and he's a great. This is kind of an older picture. Um, I kind of see it. Part two. Okay. Oh, he yeah. looked kind of good there still, but yeah, um, I just saw it. He's been having strangles for almost eight weeks now, and having I mean he's what? eating strangles. It's a. What's that? Um, it's an infection that uh, they're prone to get at the, the age that he's at. He's three, um, but it's basically pus pockets. Um, okay. And he he keeps coming up with more pus pockets and then they rupture. Um, so I'm glad it hasn't spread because when it turns to bastard strangles, that can be deadly. Um, he's eating fine and everything, but I'm just wondering. Where are you located? In Oklahoma, what? USA. Okay, so is this something that they get when they're in the dirt? Is this something? Like it's outside, spread? but he actually got it in Iowa where um, I, I rescued him from there and uh, okay. I took him with me home. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, normally it'd be over within four weeks. So one of the things is that the immune system has to get stronger. So there is yeah. some, uh, you know, even essential oils that will support the immune system. So you want to get his immune system up. Everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, we're having this pandemic and it's attacking the immune system. So something on a global, there are, uh, you know, elephants dying and there's, there's something very unique that's happening to the planet that mm -hmm. is kind of gut wrenching to our heart and our soul. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so what I would do is start thinking, how do I support its immune system, okay. not only with food, but with uh, uh, other things that the body can soak up and, mm -hmm. and then can I do to support the emotions because emotions and the immune system are so intertwined. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Honey. For, for sake of time, we can keep it a little bit more brief. Okay. Samantha I'm... can go into how she's using her diffuser and the fleas and we'll do, maybe we'll do a different problem solving class, but right mm -hmm. now we just want to hear briefly who you are, your animal, and just one sentence about the problem so we can see if we can fix That's it. That's perfect. So let's move on. Who else has a little animal? I, I was hoping that he was going to, I could show him uh, live, but he lay down and is sleeping. This is Diesel. Oh, my honey. kids are nowhere to be seen right now. They're out doing their thing. But this, this guy, Diesel here, he's, he's old and um, he's been randomly throwing up. It hasn't happened that much, but mm -hmm. a few years ago we had pancreatitis. So it just gives me anxiety, but yeah, he's old. Yeah, that's like sparkle right now. Uh, it, November and December, January, usually in November, December, my clientele is mainly animals that are going to be making that transition or in this stages of how to slow down. How do we slow down and go to the next level? How do we do that process? Because we don't do, we don't know how to do that process really well. We don't, you know, so yeah. So making them as comfortable as possible. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of. I got the, um, you yeah. mentioned herbs, uh, oils last time, and I wrote that down and I'm, I have all of it actually. So Good. Um, Good. I've mixed it. And then I have the spray that you made for, for them all also that I use. Yeah. And then the diffuser, we're going to talk about the diffuser and what uh, things I've seen with my own guys. Okay. okay. All righty. Who else? One more. Yeah. Lucy. Hello. Thanks, Lucy. Go ahead. Hi, Liz. Oh, adorable. Oh, <laughs> um, anyway, main problem with her allergies and the vet's been trying so many different things and she just has a lot of allergies, I think. And so I just, I'm a big fan of essential oils. I just want to see, you know. Right. I'll have Vicki put something so that you guys can personally email me and make a notation of this class because there is some foods and things that can help also with the allergies that are going on. Okay. And, but I don't want to talk about all of that other stuff when we're going to just deal with, uh, you know, skin problems and, and uh, the diffuser and fleas and bathing. You're trying to bathe your cat or, you know, bathing your dog and some things that will help because so much of our stuff has chemicals in it. And I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing real, real, real great changes with a lot of the products that I used to use. And so that's when I started, you know, making these subtle shifts. And, and now it's like, oh my gosh, um, even for myself, you know, I am just tired of taking stuff that doesn't seem to work on the long term. <laughs> and after a while, I have to go, Sam, this is really stupid. If it works, then it isn't going to continue to come back, continue, especially if I'm working on a core issue. So, so we'll, we'll get into some of that. All right. Who else? Thanks. Um, I'm Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. I have three pets. I don't want to make you dizzy here, but this is Dupree. Um, Hi there. <laughs> this is Estrella. Estrella. Oh, Hi sorry. There. there she is. There she is. And Gus over here. Can you see Gus? <laughs> Hi, Gus. <laughs> and Run the two the cat. <laughs> yeah. The two Lay cats back. I've had. The two cats I've had for nine years almost nine years. Gus is doing great. Um, I've had my dog for one year, um, got him from a rescue group. She, she she's coming out of a shell. Um, but Dupree is not very happy with SD. Plus she's had, she was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism and her main problem has been licking her fur off and spraying just since mm -hmm. I've had Estrella. Um, but the fur is coming back. That's not a problem anymore. She still is doing some spraying. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you. Yeah. E email me in or, or get my phone number because spraying, they have a scent gland. And, you know, we can help with is the rage <laughs> and being okay. angry with you because it's being right. pissed off. <laughs> it's a way of right. saying I'm really pissed off. <laughs> So thank you. you just have to, and I want you to start telling that cat, you're my first baby. You are my first baby. Make that cat. It's as important. And then we got so-and-so and then we got our second cat. And so do that. All right. Okay. Really, really important. You'll see a change. Okay. Thank you. So okay. We've sort of run out of time. Can we just do one more? Sherry, can you just introduce us to your bird real quick? Yep. Hi, I'm Sherry. I was on here last Hi, time with Vicky, and this is Sabrina. She, um, she's had feather problems and skin problems since I got her from a rescue center um, over seven years ago. And she's amazing, has a great personality, but um, I'm hoping maybe there's some essential oils that could help her out. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. And I know Vicky's going to ring my nail. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to get on with the class. Do you notice that the feather plucking and that becomes more acute during when it starts to get a colder weather? Oh, I've never really, you know, I've never really taken note of that. I, I just, want you to write it down. 
Okay. Write it down and start paying attention to that. Okay. And then making the area a little bit warmer because it's illogical. It's illogical. And so we wouldn't, but I pick up something emotional with, with the winter, with colder time. And, and I feel like my, my life changed regarding the temperature. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, and then we'll talk, he can, maybe I'll ask Scotty, you can ask Scotty, you know, Mm -hmm. what will help support that skin. Because he did some fabulous things regarding, I think it was your perch with your animals. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually ordered some um, doTERRA oils from you recently. So Good. I'm excited to try them out. <laughs> Great. Maybe make sure that you write, because he had that combination that he told you and then put it on the perch and yeah. it absorbs through the paws. I used to use a, a uh, combination for the immune system and put it on the paws pads of my animals, dogs and cats when I have them. So to support the body. Okay, that's it. Let's... What we're going to do today is Samantha's going to talk about her diffuser and then we're going to take questions. Then she's going to talk about natural flea solutions. Then we're going to take questions and then we're going to leave um, a period of time because you had very specific questions that maybe Scotty can recommend address yeah. those specific ones. And then let's leave a little bit of time at the end to say, in your next class, what would you like? Because the information Samantha gives is just taking off that very first layer of anxiety for animals. And then as you know, she can go really deep. So we want to do um, what's helpful to everyone. And then Maybe you have an idea of, oh, Sam, but we want to go deep. Next class, I would like, and then we'll brainstorm so we can design these classes more to you. How does that sound? Okay, so go ahead with the diffuser, Sam. Are you going to show everyone your diffuser? I want to talk about uh, yeah, my diffuser. I got to tell you guys, I love, I love this diffuser. This is a uh, deterrent, and and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Vicky sent me a couple of other. Uh, diffusers from Amazon wasn't this one one because at the time uh, Sparkle was she's old she's blind and she's deaf she can kind of make it to the pot but when I'm doing classes or or a session I can't make it in and change the towel and put another pee pad down and so uh, as a quick help me she sent me some um, serenity and and another remedy for the odor and i was using it in another diffuser the only problem was the diffuser was putting out too much steam and it was causing another little bit of problem and i had to get very aware because of her blindness and her deafness uh, that her sensing system was becoming more and more acute and then I thought, okay, I've got to really get tuned into my sensing system and my sense of smell. And so when she sent me this, I love this guy. <laughs> Not only was it easy to put the water in, and I'm going to, because I'm dyslexic. So I need things that are, I need things that are um, easy for me. So. This, you just take the lid off. And I mixed up a combination in uh, two drops of, this is the lavender, because I use this one in my bedroom. And then I put it in. There's a little red button that you can see, and you don't go any higher than that. Now, what I love about this is I love color and energy, because I learned about color. I'm a portrait artist. I was an artist for years. So this is how easy this is. Um, so to turn it on, okay, now you can see, I'm hoping you can see a little bit of the steam coming up, the color. Now, I want it to last all night long. The others didn't. So I push one, two, this is 10 hours now. Now, I like my purple. Normally, I have to just touch it a couple of times and my purple comes on. In the middle of the night when I wake up, uh, I want my purple to stay on. There. I see this beam of light, of the steam and the light here. It reminds me in the movie 
when uh, about Star Trek and Scotty, beam me up, Scotty. That's what I see when I wake up. Aside from the calming energy. Now, this goes on for a little bit, then it for five minutes, and then it turns off. Then it turns on. So the water never is empty. The other ones, the water, and I would get worried about it. Now, the side effect that I did not expect, I did not expect that that diffuser and that lavender was going to help my two cats. I have um, April. I've had April for just about uh, two years. Before that, I had Casey. Casey um, chases off all the other animals. Now, Casey will sleep in the back room with my birds and he takes care of it, comes in and out for years. Then he decided he wanted to come in the house. So I started letting him in the house in the major part. And he wanted to be friends with April. So they made agreement and I would see them and I kept saying, give them space, look and walk away, just walk by each one. So I was doing that. Now I did not expect that um, in a short time when I put the diffuser on that April would let Casey come in our bedroom. She is owner of the bed. And so the, so I was using this in about, oh, I would say two weeks, no more than three at the max. The personality changed of the two of them and they were sleeping close to one another on the bed. Now, uh, many times they're not side by side, but they'll be like this. Now they sleep a good, you know, one side of the bed and the other one on the other side. It's no problem coming in the room. So I find, I'm finding that you don't think that just the subtle smell now, because I'm aware of the sensory aspect of the animals, I don't put a lot in the diffuser. I put two drops into a half a thing of water. If it's too much and I can tell from them, I, I add a little more water. So when I started to check out flea, regarding the fleas, because of their sense of smell, I, I had to find out, okay, which, which sense of the different uh, essential oils do the cats resonate to? Now, the two major ones that kill fleas, and then there are several that are... Um, uh, they, re they, what do you, what is the term when, uh, oh God, <laughs> repel, repel fleas. Okay. So cedar wood is one of them that kills it, kills fleas. Another one is thyme, kills fleas flat out. So those two are the two that you really want to put in a shampoo and you'll want to put on a, a collar or the, you know, uh, uh, for, for a cat or a dog. And also you want to make either a room spray or you can put it in. Uh, I mixed up a several. When I'm going to put it on the, my cat's body, then what I did was I, because April's got a different sense aspect than Casey. So I did something very unique. There's a whole list of different um, essential oils that will repel fleas and kill fleas. And so I decided to take and test out some of them. So one of them, I found that April, when I was using On Guard for me, she would come over and lick me. And I noticed the other cats wanted to lick me. And I thought, okay, so if there's something in this one that they really, really resonate to. And then when I was looking for the ones for the fleas, I thought, okay, I've got to find out if she, how she's going to respond to this because I don't want to fix something that they're not going to use, that the cat isn't going to let you put on. So I mixed time, one drop of time on this little saucer and one drop of lavender on this saucer. I took a Q-tip. 
And I put a small amount on the Q-tip and I went over to her and I said, what do you think of this smell? And if they turn and don't want you to be near it and they just back away, then they're going to give you a real hard time when you give them a shampoo or when you mix it up in uh, the fragmented coconut oil to put it on their back and their legs. They're not going to like it. And you're going to do double check to make sure that this is okay if they lick it. Because there are certain ones like uh, tea tree oil that you don't want to use. You, you, that's very, very bad poison for them. So by taking and just testing it with a little cucumber, different aspects, like if I mixed it, what I did is I tried to mix um, the, the thyme with uh, peppermint. Uh-oh. She wouldn't have anything to do with it. So that helps me save a lot of money. <laughs> and I mix that up. And then you mix it in a small amount for the body. And then I put it on my hands instead of spraying it on her body. I put it on my hands and then just wipe down her spine and then down off of her legs. It's like a barrier because it's on the fur. It's not soaking into the skin. So you're just going down the body and then in a couple of days, you're going to have to do that again to defuse, to get rid of the fleas. Aside from uh, vacuuming, I vacuum. I've always wanted to have a lot of animals. So I vacuum every day. I, it's worth it to me. Um, and then you have to bathe them. Bathing a dog is a whole lot easier than trying to bathe a cat. So, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can make up the shampoo. There are some neat shampoos out there that are healthy that you can put the combination in and then shake it up. Or you can make it. Uh, Vicki had sent me, uh, uh, I think it was a, it was a, what was the name of that soap? I don't remember the name of the soap. There's a company that called... Uh, earth bath and it has oatmeal and aloe vera in it and you can put it into that there's also uh castile soap that you know you can add the essential oils to and then shake it up really 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 good and bathe your dog with it uh, again remember that their sensory system their sense of smell we may like the smell that's why i would test the smells out and then keep it very mild so that it doesn't take a lot to kill off a flea. We will add too many of them or too much strong odors and it affects them. So you want to cut that down a little bit. When you go to wash a cat, I have a couple of things about this. I have a couple of kitties that don't mind me washing, but if I try I washed polar bear or ah, thanks, Vicki. Uh, and then you can pick on this. She just put on the screen, pick several. Now the cedar is, and cedar wood, remember you want two that are going to kill off the fleas and two repellents. So don't mix all of that together. It's too heavy for them. It's too much. Then you can put it into the shampoo and then test it out with a Q-tip. You're going to find that it's very, very effective. Then I would make also a spray bottle that you're not using on them, that you're going around the corners and the doorways and putting it out. Um, there are things that you can get for outside that is, uh, you know, natural that you can put around, including plants like peppermint um, plants that will, you know, uh, repel fleas. These two, what I love is when you make up, like for, for Spark, for April, I mixed cedar and I mixed thyme, cedar wood, thyme, and then the coconut, infused coconut oil. Coconut oil is really stops itch. So if they have a skin problem, it's going to stop the itch. You can use it direct. I just love what it how effective it is regarding uh, skin problems. Uh, and then, and also, not only does it stop itch, but a lot of times the fleas don't like it. So you're putting a good combination in there that is going to be helpful all the way around without making your animals sick. So 
really do some investigation on this and take the time to test out the different odors to see which ones your your cats love and or your dog really likes. Um, let's ask us some questions regarding that because sometimes I go too fast. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to mention, if you're not wanting to, uh, you know, play around with the different ones, because there's a long list on that. Uh, Duterra has a uh, Terra Shield and it has the cedar wood in it. Again, test it out to see if your cat's going to like that scent. Uh, because the more that they like that scent and you like that scent, you'll use it. If you don't like the scent and they don't like the scent, you're going to have an animal that isn't going to like you too well and is going to run. I want to have it so that uh, they start, you know, really liking the odor and then feeling what it does to their body. Can we slow if you're, down? uh huh. Can we slow down, Sam. So, like, how would you test the oil to see if the animal likes it? And that's where that Q-tip. Okay. This little Q-tip, and mixing a small, small amount on this little saucer, and then let them smell it. If they don't want to even be near it, what they'll do is they'll usually go, and then wait a second, and then you'll see them want to reach again. Then you'll know, okay, th there's something in this that they really are resonating. If they go up to it, go uh, back away immediately, that, that, then don't use that combination. Don't check that combination out. Check it, a, give them a little bit of time. I was so impressed with April and Casey because I utilized them as my testers because I was testing out different smells and different combinations um, with animals. Instead of just, you know, it's like I want, I like the smell of lavender. Doing two over two drops in my diffuser for them, uh uh. That was too much for them. So you have to monitor what you're doing uh, with the scent and their sensory system. Their sensory system is, uh, yeah, again, the, now on this one, I love this. The lemongrass, again, you might just uh, take the lemongrass out if they have skin problems. Remember that the lemongrass is going to be a little bit burny. You don't want it if you're making a flea call that it, if their body starts to sweat. So change it out with lavender, with the lavender and test it out. See how they respond to that. Take the time to do that. Um, you'll, you'll find it much more effective. And if I could interject. So do you, if you guys want any tiny little samples of any of these to test on your pets, Michelle, who's on this call, can mail them to you. Oh, that'd be great. So her contact information is in the chat box. So she can mail you some samples so you can test them out to see if your pets like it. And one more thing, Sam, you mentioned coconut oil. Scotty, can you tell us the difference between oh, the huge difference. coconut oil and the fractionated coconut oil that Samantha uses from doTERRA? And why fractionated? Sure. Um, the difference between fractionated and just virgin coconut oil is that fractionated coconut oil, they've taken out all of the fat. And without the fat, the oil itself will not turn rancid. Um, also, in the cold weather, it will not harden, whereas uh, you know, virgin coconut oil will do so. Yeah. But if you are dealing with something that the animal is going through a, maybe a difficult time adjusting to the oil and it's causing some skin irritation, you might in fact want to switch to virgin coconut oil. Um, VCO uh, has a real calming effect on skin issues yeah. as a whole. Um, but again, you know, depending upon where you're living, if it's cold, you, you know, you're not going to be able to use it very easily. So fractionated coconut oil is fine to use, but make sure that you use uh, a really uh, diluted amount of oil, okay, with the fractionated coconut oil. Yeah. Very um, important, okay. especially when you're dealing with the... tiny animals, with pocket-sized animals. Was that, um... 
Hope that helps. I said that same evening, Saturday evening, I was looking online to buy some shoes and I thought, yeah, I'm going to pay with my credit card, but I still want to know. Um, <laughs> We've got you on. Oh, I want to know what's in my checking account. Oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you Do you know that you're being, uh, you're on like <laughs> class? Right. And so, Samantha, what was the next thing that you <laughs> wanted to talk about? Um, didn't you, did you tell everyone about Casey and um, Sparkles? Yeah. Yeah, they do. I was talking about the in the diffuser in my bedroom and that I had been doing a lot of inner work, giving them visions of giving space and seeing uh, Casey walking by April and April walking by Casey. And, and, and she was fine with that, but she was not fine with him coming to the bedroom until I was started using the diffuser and the lavender was lavender. And then I think I used... Um, it's mainly lavender because I wanted to rest because I'm tired. And, uh, and then the byproduct was she, they changed, their personalities changed. And she let him on the bed. And when I, uh, then one night I went in there and they're laying side by side. Uh, and now last night he was on the bed. There is no problem with the bed anymore or the red bedroom any longer. So that's a byproduct. I did not expect that. And so when we think about a diffuser, you want something that's uh, not going to, you know, this, I, I could set it for the 10 hours with no problem. And there was no, the water doesn't, you know, drain out. And I didn't have to worry about it. Plus, I love the look of it and the color frequency of it. So... That was, you know, that was uh, profound for me. And I've put other different remedies, uh, oils in it uh, during the day sometimes because they'll both be in there. And I'm just, right now I'm testing out, okay, what does, what happens to them? What is their response? Because I have this gift of talking with animals. Most doctors and scientists have to come from a scientific point of view on how to make something for an animal. What I am doing, because I love the doTERRA, I am testing and asking them, how, do you, how does your body respond to this? What, how can we make a, a different remedy for you that's going to be effective and that we'll be able to use over and over? That's healthy. That doesn't have a side effect. Especially if you're going to, when I mentioned about the coconut oil, uh, I should have made it clear. One, you know, the fractionated is to dilute. The other was um, for the skin issues. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy and it's fun to know that you're utilizing something that they're not going to be sick from internally and 10 years later you've got a big problem again check these if there's a skin issue you want to not have the lemongrass in it because it'll irritate uh, and you want to test out to see if the if the animal has a it's not just the scent of smell Animals have a consciousness in their body of what's good for them. We used to have that in our bodies and we would resonate to the right food or knew we needed oranges or knew it wasn't something that you consciously thought about. You just, you know, remember those days when you would open up a refrigerator and you knew you were hungry, you wanted something, your body's craving something. Well, when you think about an animal, their body will let them know what it is they want. They don't have a refrigerator. They don't have a pharmacy. They have nature. And But what's sad is we've cut that nature relationship out. So we're having animals that have a lot more physical issues or emotional issues, not recognizing that the earth will defuse some of the rage, some of the frustration um, help balance us. We use shoes all the time now. So when you're thinking on terms of your making a collar, start with a couple of things, check it out with them, and then uh, read that recipe 
and then do that and then let it dry and then put it on your animal. And you'll start to see this incredible change. Consistency is huge um, and not getting discouraged. One of the things that I was really fascinated about is Vicki had sent me an information regarding fleas. Now, I always thought the fleas are just biting the dogs or the cats. I didn't really realize uh, intellectually and emotionally, I didn't grasp it. I just saw the process, okay, they lay eggs, they cocoon, they come out and they have a flea and that's it. But I didn't realize that most of that timing is in the carpet or in the uh, some area where they don't eat the uh, bite your animal and have blood. Most of that is eating skin cells uh, or dust or other debris. And then once they turn into a flea, then they go after your guy. That's why it's important to treat the carpet and vacuum on a regular basis or put something, uh, you know, that not only kills them, that really you're aware of the process of that um, in order to eliminate it on a long term. Many times I will mix up and I have a spray bottle. Here's my spray bottle right here. Mm, pardon me. I love this spray bottle. So I have one in the other room that has tea tree oil in it. Now, I don't use the tea tree oil with my guys, but I do use that because on the out, around the outside and certain around the windows, I spray this little sucker and eliminate because I have a lot of animals that use my backyard that are wild. And there are some strange kind of bites that go on. And so that eliminates all of that kind of problem. So I have one. This one's for sparkle. And I, I love the spray on this. And then I have that one. And then I have on guard in my living room. And I have a small on guard in the car. So really look into these different aspects. The cat's love on guard. They recognize that there's something unique about that oil. So <clears throat> check it out. Okay. Yep. Vic. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, if you want um, recommendations from Scotty specifically yes. about problems that we didn't address today, can Scotty, can you put your information please in the chat box? Then you can um, contact Michelle if you want samples of any of these oils to see if your animals like them. Her information's in the chat box. And now, um, does anyone have questions about the fleas or the oils? Yeah. I was thinking about if you have multiple animals and they dislike, they like and dislike different things. Absolutely. That's why I tested that out because right. I do have multi, you know, five cats. Right. So you and can't so, use one that one dislikes on any of them, right? right? No, I make up. That's why I have those different spray bottles and a small uh, dishes that I mix up and put it on their body. And two of the cats, there's no way that I can bathe them. Uh, and then two of them, uh, three of them, I can. And so there are different ways of handling it. If I'm brushing them every day or every other day, taking, you know, if there's any fleas on them and then mixing up that small amount with the uh, fractionated oil mm -hmm. and then running it down the fur, down the spine and then down on the sides without saturating them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because most often we tend to think that we're supposed to saturate them. No, this is a repellent. That's not going to, it's not, they're not going to, the fleas aren't going to get near them. And uh, there's one other thing that I really, my, I spent 17 years studying about color, frequency, and how it affects our emotions and our life. And so <clears throat> when you mix it up in that oil and start small and you've tested it out on the animal, 
then make a small amount and then stir it up or rub your hands so that the frequency changes and becomes more powerful. It isn't so much more quantity, it's the energy that explodes it. Okay. And then rub your hand down the animals and off of their, their body and their sides. So you'll find that, that they're more, it's more effective that way. We're getting into more uh, about the frequency of different things as we evolve. And that's, for me, that's, you know, I have people, for instance, when I sent the spray, I said, you know, circus it at least 200 times in order to explode those molecules and it becomes more powerful. We're not aware of the power in which that happens, you know. So do it from that perspective and then mix up something in a spray bottle that uh, you're not going to spray at your animal. You're going to use it on the corners or in the carpet when they're not around and vacuum it up. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a whole lot better than putting a chemical on the back of their neck that is soaked into their body and their gut. And I think that the gut's one of the problem we're having with so many animals with gut problems is because there are side effects and those, you know, fleet stuff affects the physical body. If it's going to go through their body and their skin and a flea bites it and dies, then what the blue blazes is going on with the cells in the body yeah. and the animal. So that's why it's important to take your time, check out what, uh, you know, what sense in the, the, the ones that really kill fleas and the ones that repel fleas. You want to do both and which combination your animal likes. But if I use, let's say the two cats that cuddle together normally, and they, they, they very much dislike this is what, the other This one. is what I love. This is what I love. After a little while, you don't smell the smell. Okay. They don't, well, it, it becomes so subtle and we don't smell it. They don't smell it, but it's working. Okay. You're not adding more, you're, you're maintaining energy, okay? You'll find that it'd be very, very effective. Uh, and start thinking in terms of the fleas, you know. Put, plant some more plants around the outside of the house to that are repellent. Utilize those other things. Utilize more natural aspects that are there available, okay? There are a lot, okay? I get in trouble with the homeowners association because I have so much plants, but... <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I plan things that are so yeah, natural. Um, I just wanted to ask about anxiety. Yeah, I just not too long ago saw, uh, and maybe Scotty can tell you which one it is, but they have a combination that is for uh, anxiety. And oh, I have, yeah, yeah Deterra. And I was really surprised about it because, you know, I always used to think in terms of it, uh, an essential oil was more for the physical body and, and, you know, for that. And I was utilizing the Bach flowers more for the emotion. But what's happening is more and more of them are you being used uh, for the emotional aspect as well as the physical body, which I'm delighted about. So the more that I'm doing research and then asking my guys and asking different clients, will you use this? And please tell me, or what do you see the changes that your animal's making? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes we just blindly give them something. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, recommend too for anxiety. Um, Samantha's talked uh, along about lavender, you know, just using it in your diffuser. Um, serenity is good. And if you're doing lavender or serenity, they're good for cats. For dogs, you can actually use um, a, a doTERRA blend called Balance. Yes. And that's really good for anxiety for them. Okay, that works really well. But you know, the idea is that when you're gonna use a diffuser in a room with your animals, for your animals, leave a door open so that they can walk mm -hmm. out if they don't like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the main thing. That, that's, that's how they're going to tell you. No, this is not the one for me. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. They do. And then you can, <laughs> you can yeah. 
So can, can we answer Corrine's question, if, if mm -hmm. possible? Corrine, can you go ahead? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, OK. Um, so I ride a horse that has that cribs. They like bite on things and they can't stop. It's like a nervous habit. Um, is And the horse isn't mine. So I think it's from stress from being in the box stall all the time. Yes. So is there something that could help that? And you couldn't really use, it's in a barn, like you couldn't use something that had an electrical cord or, you know what I mean? No, you don't yeah. need to. Yeah. Of course, a horse is a huge animal. You can just put the serenity in your hand and just, you don't have to hold it over his nose, but hold it near his near his nose so he can inhale it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's all and it like, is. And like how often do they need oh. that? Gosh, once every three, four hours, that's fine. Oh, like regular, like you, you'd have to do it all day long to try to calm that well, out of them. If he's constantly upset, um, you're going to have to do something uh, about probably working with his digestive system. That might be a, a cause of the problem too. We don't know. I think that's why we got uh, Samantha. Samantha really can actually look into those things in more depth when you're dealing with the horse. They may show it physically, but it's something going on with them internally, maybe mentally. Mm -hmm. that uh, is really bugging them. So uh, just to it? calm them down and do serenity. Yeah, that's re really, really, really effective. And then putting it down the spine, right where their withers are going down, uh, putting it on there, making a little bit what, what Scotty was saying with the uh, fractionated oil, and then just placing it right in, you know, right on that area. Um, one of the things when he was talking about, uh, you know, trying to help the anxiety, there are, as, as I said, there are box flowers you can put into the water and that will help. But if you can't get them out to run, if, if that's not feasible, then I would take the time at night to do a personal prayer and then be that animal and and ask uh, and give it some visions that it could be running in its dream. Ah. You know? Utilize our other abilities, the visual abilities we have, our other skills okay. that, that will be very, very helpful. Recognize that when you're using a spray, like when he was saying about uh, the serenity, mm -hmm. why have it close to the nose? The olfactory gets into the emotional system faster than putting it on the body. Oh, okay. And it'll go to the original issues. So if you do uh, at night, take a photo of your horse, play this on your lap, close your eyes, do a prayer. And then this is what I do. I literally say, what does it feel like to be you? And then that's how I'll pick up information i'll pick up a sensation in my body or a thought don't veto it just write it down then i want you to ask in ask the soul of this animal i want it to run while it's dreaming i want it to feel like it's really utilizing its body so that in the morning it's a little tired <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. so use that skill our thought yeah. is powerful thought directs the energy in your mind and then the energy follows your thought okay okay, okay. now Samantha, can she put the serenity on a blanket and hang the blanket in the stall mm -hmm. yes yes Great. So now for sake of time, what would you, you, how would you guys you like the future class, Samantha, to do her classes? Can you give us suggestions so she can design a better class? Just we'll chime in and we'll take maybe five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. I have, I so. uh, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Um, Chloe's got really bad breath and I don't know if it's a digestion issue or what. So maybe something on digestion probiotics or something. I, I don't know if there's an essential oil to help with that. I don't think it's stress related. She doesn't strike me as being stressed out, but uh, her breath is killer. Even after she's had her teeth cleaned, 
it's okay, still that's that's not, good no, and she's that always a had, lot of good ever since i i had her when she was she came to my house as a stray um can i address that real quick um yes, please. i believe that you know if you use the oil called digest zen uh mm -hmm. use it very diluted and just um uh, rub it, you know, rub it in the digestive area, the, the stomach area, uh, it could help. Uh, and that's, also, that's while she I- also mm. has, has a fatty tumor, one of three on her stomach area. Yeah. Um, uh, you can use frankincense there. It might yes. help with uh, relieving that. Uh, I wanted to um, really address the, the Yoshimura's Addison's. Um, I know that you're very stressed about it. You're, the animal is vomiting a lot. Was that was the problem? Again, utilizing Digest Zen would help to relieve a lot of that uh, that vomiting issue. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. I think you'll be quite surprised. And most recently, um, DoTerra has reformulated their Digest Zen to be a lot more effective. But again, you know, diluted a lot. And then one more thing: someone was really concerned with strangles. Um, mm -hmm. With the strangles, I would uh, look toward wound care, just first aid care in anything that you do with your horse. Uh, on guard is a, is a key uh, thing for you to use. You can actually address, dress the wound with a wet towel soaked in some on guard. You know, just put it in a, in a bucket, put a couple drops of on guard in it, soak the towel, wring it out, and just gently dress the wound or pat the wound where that infection is and it should help get rid of the infection pretty quickly okay scotty there's the mm, digest excellent the, scotty there's the digestion oil then there's the digest touch and then there's the pills use the digestion oil the yeah. oil yeah i'm playing with that the roll-on scotty with one of my cats Oh, good. And I'm putting it in the roll on on my hand, then and then diluting it, and then on her tummy. <laughs> yes, the roll on that she's talking about is digests and touch. Yes, and yeah. it's already automatically diluted uh, with fractionated coconut oil to the right and proper dilution ratio. So use mm -hmm. that. Fine. Yeah, I love that. It's effortless. Uh, yeah, would, it would that work for the bad breath, the uh, roll on the hands, and rub it on the stomach, or do you suggest? No, I would, I would just rub it on the stomach and see how that goes for now. Um, I think that the stomach issue is, is a matter of balance. The balance of what's going on in the stomach is not right, and the digestion will help either way, whether, you know, the animal is constipated or the animal has a runny stomach, any imbalance will be addressed by digest zen. Yes. Give it a shot. Okay. Vic, um, Samantha, you, this class is so awesome. I am so happy with this class. Thank oh, okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like I, I'm having fun with, uh, you know, asking <laughs> the thought of asking my cats how, you know, how is this responding to you? So it's, you know, I never even dreamed of doing something like this. You know, Just, that picture, you had a slide of uh, the tiny little dog with a, a red collar. That's our dog. Um, <laughs> and I've learned how to communicate with that tiny little animal. And she oh. just has me wrapped around her little paw oh. all the time. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah, and then you sit down and, you know, do that thing where what I was talking about, uh, uh, you know, I always do a little prayer and then I say, I take the photo or if the animal's on my lap or, or sitting in front of me, then I just say, what does it feel like to be you? And then I go neutral. And whatever comes into your body, it, it, we don't recognize that that's how they talk you know, the thought will come in or the vision will come in or the feeling will come in or sensory, my, my skin may start to hurt or my shoulder will start to hurt and I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, we just would pass it on, not recognizing body to body, mind to mind, heart to heart. Doop. What does it feel like to be you? Simple. Um, and also Vicky had an awesome idea on how this 
class should be form formatted, what the agenda should be. You all have Samantha's email address and you now have mine too. So anything that you pass on to us will be put together in some sort of logical great format so that we can address all of the problems that come up in the future. And uh, we'd love to hear more from you. And I, I've got to run Vicki, but if you have any suggestions for future classes, please let us know. Thanks, Scotty. Adore you. <laughs> I gotta go for Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. So Thanks, welcome. guys. Okay, so that concludes it. And please email Thank Samantha you. or um, Michelle please. or me about what you would like the future classes to be. Please do that. Okay. Thank really, you. Really. Samantha, can, you bless, can you bless everyone and their animals before we leave, Samantha? Oh, you know. Give us the blessing. Yeah, you know, I, I think what I'd like to do is just have everybody just close their eyes for just a second. And I want you to feel how much you love not only your animal companion, but all animals. And that... Um, as we get allow ourselves to feel our animals and just love them, uh, that it will expand to all animals, including the human race. Um, and recognize that the more that we see the power of love, feeling it from our guys and giving it to them, it expands, it expands, it expands. And then by doing that, by acknowledging that your little doggy or your cat or your horse is more than that body, it has a soul and you can communicate with it and that you just love its being. That's all you need to do. Thanks for showing up, guys. Thanks for wanting Thank to Thank make you. a difference. Thanks. Bye-bye.